edification. That's how the language is built. Butter edification. Right. <laughs> Be edified and undergirded all at the same time. Amen. Well, today's message that I'm bringing us is called, In Order to Bloom, You Have to Prune. So, you know, I've said it many times, and I've heard other people talking about it during this year, that this was a year where God is revealing more of his glory. And that, that, that declaration is something that makes us quite happy about it. We, we can get our dance on, yeah, we, we're going to see more of God's glory. Yet there's a serious matter that we really have to think about. And that is before a flower can bloom or fruit can manifest, the gardener has to prune the plant. And it's the same with us. Before we can bloom, God prunes us. And I know everyone loves to hear about pruning, right? And said no one, said no one, said no one. But we're going to look at why this is important. Amen. And we're going to glean some things from this today that will be a blessing to us. So let's pray and then we're going right, to jump right into the scripture. And I'm reading from John 15 verses 1 through 11. I'm going to reference the other pieces when I get to the end of my message before the meat of this message. We're reading from John 15 verses 1 through 11 and I'm reading the Amplified. Father, I thank you for this day. God, God I give you praise and honor for who you are. Lord, you are truly the vine dresser and we come to you because we know that you desire to work on us and work in us. And Father, we do want to bloom. We want to bring forth good fruit and we want to do what honors you. But we know sometimes the pruning process can be difficult and hard. But Lord, we ask you today to give us encouragement in your word so that we can understand the why it's necessary. And when it's all said and done, may you be glorified in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Starting with verse 1 and it reads, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have given you. The teachings which I have discussed with you remain in me and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit for otherwise apart from me, that he is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch and withers and dies. And they gather such branches and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is, if you are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified and honored by this. When you bear much fruit and prove yourselves to be my true disciples, I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love and do not doubt my love for you. If you keep my commandments and obey my teachings, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remained in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. Lord, we thank you for your word. Amen. So let's, there's a few words in here that I want to take a look at that we see. We see vine, we see vine dresser, and we see branch. And I'm going to talk about grapes as well. So I'm kind of doing, if you will, a word study of this so that we can really see what Jesus was trying to tell us. And so these words are significant for this reason. Jesus is using them to help us understand the relationship between us and God. And he's explaining to us how God sees us and how to accept the pruning of God. Amen. So let's look at the vine dresser first. The vine dresser is a person who prunes, trains, and cultivates vines. A vine dresser's grace way, um, remind, remain with him for decades. So a vine dresser in the natural, when he oversees his, his area of grapes or his grapes, he may have the same bushes for decades. He comes to know each one of these personal, in a personal way, just like a shepherd would know his sheep. He knows how the vine is faring from year to year. 
which ones are doing more productive or vigorous than others. The vine dresser, even though he may have many vines, he understands what each grand vine needs to grow. So it is with God and our relationship. Jesus used this analogy of the vine dresser to paint the picture of his, to his audience of a father that cares personally for the needs of each of his children. Amen. He cares so much that he carefully watches over them and when needed, he trims and prunes them so that they can continue to produce healthy fruit. Let me look at that verses 1 through 3 again. What it says, it says, I'm the true vine, my father is the vine dresser. He says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, what does he say? He takes it away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he, he what? It, I like it said, he repeatedly prunes it so that it will bring forth more fruit. See, God is the vine dresser of our lives because we are connected to the vine and that vine is Jesus. Therefore, he's going to repeatedly prune us so that we can bear richer and finer fruit. Lord Jesus, that heart right there. Pruning is hard. And this message is not just about salvation. Because in verse 3, he says, you are already clean because of the word which I have given you. So it is not just about salvation. What then is the message? It is Jesus trying to let his listeners know that God is wanting you to grow up. That God is wanting you to be more holy. God is wanting you to be more useful. He wants you to be more useful for the vine breakfast purpose. Because the vine dresser, he doesn't grow grapes so that and have no intentions of using them. Whoever has a grape, you know, or orchard, they're not just growing grapes and then when they grow and already and after they've done their work, they just let them fall on the ground. No, they're going to sell them, they're going to turn them into wine, they're going to turn them into grape juice, they're going to turn them into food. They're going to do something with those grapes so that it'll turn around and bring an increase to the estate of the wine dresser. That's a blessing right there. See, God wants us to bring an increase to his estate, which is his kingdom. Amen. Proverbs 3 and 12 says, For those who the Lord loves, he corrects, even as a father corrects the sons in whom he delights. That's, that's Proverbs 3 12. I didn't get that to Pastor James. But see, this is why we have to understand that we get pruned because God considers us those that he loves. He loves us, therefore he prunes us. Here it says correct. Well, guess what? That's the same thing as pruning. The branches weren't doing what they're supposed to. He cut them off so he could correct the way the plant was growing so it could bring about what he needed. And so both pruning and trimming allow the proper the plant to grow in a proper way. As well, and it, it helps to control insects and it helps it to keep the plant from diseases that would happen if it wasn't trimmed or if it wasn't pruned. When you prune a grape, a grapevine, it's vital to its overall health. In fact, regular pruning is essential for controlling the growth, the grape canes, and to produce a quality of fruit that it yields. Amen. And so the two terms, pruning and trimming, are often used interchangeably, but what I found out, they are very different. When you are removing the dead, loose, or infected branches or strings from a plant, that's pruning. Trimming, on the other hand, is just when you're cutting back the bush because it's getting overgrown, a lot of leaves, so you're trimming it back. So the vine dresser, he's going to prune during the grapevine's inactivity, the dormant season. And they said that's usually in, the, in late winter. So when it comes to pruning grapes, the most common mistakes people make is they don't prune enough. I heard that light pruning, Jesus help us, said light pruning does not promote adequate fruit. Whereas heavy pruning provides the greatest quality of grapes. So why did God prune us so deep? Because he wants the best quality of grapes. And when, when you're pruning grapes, you know, I'm going to be an expert. I'm an expert on building houses. I'm going to be an expert on growing a grapes. He said when you prune grapes, you want to cut, cut off as much of the old wood as possible. This then encourages the new wood to grow so that the fruit, because the fruit comes from the, from the new wood. That's where it's produced from, from the new branches. See, we often think of leaves as the fruit bear, but it's the branches that is actually bearing the fruit. So what's the message that we want to hear from the vine dresser? You know, have you ever felt like God was pruning you too much? Yes, Lord. But guess what he was doing? He was being the vine dresser to our lives. He knew that if he didn't cut deep enough, and not that we wouldn't produce the right amount of fruit. That our fruit wouldn't be what he wanted us to do. So he had to prune us hard. He had to get rid of the dead wood so new wood could come and could grow. And this new, new wood, as I said, is where the fruit comes from. 
But what's some new wood that God wants to bring in our life? He wants us to have new attitudes, new thinking, new ideas, new beliefs about him and new beliefs about ourselves, new way of understanding, new way of, of revelation, new way of dealing deeper into who the Holy Ghost is, digging deeper, going deeper, allowing him greater access. That's all new wood because guess what? When we give him access and that new wood comes forth, he can bring some fruit from it. And it says that he pruned during times of inactivity. You know, when you are inactive, get ready to be pruned. You need to stay. You don't don't don't, don't get dormant. Don't get dormant. Because when you get inactive, get ready. God is gonna prune because see that means some stuff is starting to dry up. Sometimes we get too comfortable with where we are, and the Lord say, uh uh, no, I got to cut some stuff. Help me, Jesus. He said, I got to cut some stuff. So, and this is how you know you come to a place where you're getting ready to be pruned. Because see, he do it in the winter time, is when they do. Now you don't think that they would prepare stuff in the winter. You think it's winter time, they ain't gonna do nothing. But it's like, no, it's that that's that hidden season. God is gonna call us to some hidden seasons. It might not be winter in the natural, but it may be a winter season in the spirit. Well, God will call you away. And how you know that it's that time is because you'll notice that certain things that you've been doing comfortably, you're not comfortable with no more. Some things that just been a habit, you feel like there's a pulling and a nugget nudging, like maybe it's something that needs to be different. I need to try try something different. I need to have a different thinking. That's because God is saying, I'm ready to prune you. I'm ready to prune you. Amen? Amen. And sometimes he does trim. Sometimes he don't always prune. Sometimes he trims. But guess what? He trimming the overgrown leaves because too many leaves don't allow for fruit. That's a message right there. God cuts back the flash. He cuts back the outward show. You know, we leafy. We leafy. When we get leafy, when we get leafy, because that's all about the show. Look, oh, I got a lot of leaves. Bam, I'm a tree. I got all these leaves. But I need them leaves gone. Pluck, pluck. Trim, trim. Why? Because I need the fruit. God's whole concern about our life, his goal for our life is not the flash, not the leaves. Yeah, leaves are useful, but too many of them keep the fruit from coming up. So God's goal for your life and my life is to bring forth and to produce more fruit. Say produce more fruit. Yes, Lord. And so now let's look at the vine. Now, who's the vine? A vine is a climbing or trailing woody stem plant of the grape family. One method used to prune grape vines is to prune the vine in areas and leave what is called a renewal spur. That means all the old wood is removed and only an area is left look like a little stump or a little, a little stub. And this renewal spur then will allow branches to grow. So it might cut back and look like you got a little nub or nothing, but it's purposeful because there's something that's going to come out of that. And so Jesus declares himself what? He says, I am the true vine. Where other, there's no other branches that we can attach, there's no other vine that we can attach ourselves to that will allow us to grow the way that the Father wants us to. And see, he, he was pruned. He was cut. Jesus was. He became the stump. He became the only thing that us branches can grow from. He took what? The pruning from the vine dresser, his father, so that you and I, so that he could be the stump, if you will, the remaining vine where all the branches grow. Isaiah 11 and 1 says this. Then a shoot, the Messiah, will spring from the stock of Jesse, David's father, and a branch from his root will bear fruit. See, he is already was already told that he was going to be the stump, but he was going to be that little nub that was left that we were going to grow from. Isaiah 53 and 5, this is the 21st century King James Version, so I just need to read this. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. See, he is the reason why we are able to stand. He is the reason why we can grow. He took it all, so it's a lot more stuff that we would have had to take that we couldn't stand under no way, and then we still would have had to be prone. And if Isaiah, I mean, in the, in the, the scripture, four verses four through six, he says that remain in me and I will remain in you. He said, what? No branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in me. Neither can you bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. Jesus is telling his list, listeners this. You can't bring fruit unless the, the fruit that the vine dresser wants unless you are rooted in me. Unless I am the uh, I am the vine that you as the branch are attached to. And he tells us that we got to stay connected. There's a connection that has to stay. I like something that verse 4 says. It says producing evidence of your faith. He tells us this, by allowing ourselves to be pruned, 
it actually produces evidence of our faith. Because how easy is it to be pruned? How easy is it to be torn back and pulled back and to find yourself going through a place and a season that feels quite uncomfortable and like you can't stand, but yet in the midst of it, you keep saying to yourself, but your Lord, I'm going to keep trusting you. But Lord, I'm going to keep trusting you. This don't feel good, but I'm going to keep trusting you. Lord, this don't, this don't seem right, but I'm going to keep trusting you. I'm looking for you, but I don't see you. Is you over here? I don't see you. I'm in a desert place, and it don't seem like there's no water coming, no time. I'm soon. I'm thirsty. I need you. Where are you? But yet, what am I going to do? I'm going to stand and say I'm going to stay faithful because you told me to do that. That then produces evidence of my faith. I, I've said it before and I know I have to remind myself about it. If you said God said he's going to do this and he gave it to you immediately, where would you have? Where would your faith be tested? Where would you have to wait on every, anything? I would like to see how that feel every now and again, but that just don't seem to be my lot too often. I'm like uh, Abraham and all of them. I got to wait the 40 years for my stuff to happen, but however it goes, I, I heard it. Thank you, uh, Evangelist Tiffany. I wanted to hit you because I'm like, Lord, stop having her tell me what you tell me all the time. I know I was made for this. I just don't want to be made for this. <laughs> You don't want to be made for the heart. Lord, I don't always want it to be hard. But the thing is, he pruning you and he does it over and over again. He says, well, this is the place that but it produces evidence of your faith. All right. Our faith is strengthened through our pruning. And there's some results that happen when, when, when we prune. It says something about, you know, it, gets, it deals with pest control. When you prune back the plants, it deals with pest control because little bugs get in on plants, and if you're not careful, they will actually kill the plant. I had a bush, real pretty bush in my backyard. See, I was just trimming it because it was real leafy, and I would just go out there and trim it, thought I was doing something. Till after a while, I started noticing I could pull one of the branches, and that was almost the whole tree came off because what happened was I was not cutting back the branches that were that needed to be cut off, so it started to allow for some infection and start a pest got in, and that whole tree is gone now because the thing just died. But see, God is trying to keep you from dying. He's trying to keep me from dying, so He's trimming and pruning us back so that we can He can content, uh, take care of the pest, which the pest of our soul is the devil. He wants to come in and plant little bugs in your ear. He want to tell you you ain't nothing. He want to tell you to be afraid. He want to tell you this is what you see is all you're gonna get. So He comes with them little pesty bugs and he drops them on you. He just drop it right on you. And if you don't let God prune back that bush that now has and been infected with that, you're going to find yourself stuck in that places and that infection going to end up going all through your spirit, all through your soul. So the Lord says, no, no, no. I got to get rid of that fear. I got to get rid of that pesty bug of doubt. I got to get rid of it. So I'm going to prune you back. I'm going to prune you back. And he also do it because it's proper growth. See, as you grow, you he don't want the same fruit. He wants a better harvest than the one he had last year. So we can get excited about, oh yeah, I, you know, I did this last year. Praise God. Give me, give my praise out. He said, yeah, that's so good, but I can ready to prune you because I can believe I can get a better fruit this year. I can get a better crop this year. And what I do this year, I see the result of the fruit next year. So God is pruning you not just for right now, but for what you're going to walk into. That's a blessing. He pruning you for your future. He pruning you for the things that you're going to face. He pruning you because he know what he prunes now is going to bring the outcome in the next year. Amen. And then it's when you prune, they prune neglected vines and stages. And it says that yearly they come back and they prune to continue to get a renewal spur, that, that new vine. And they said what happens is with some of them, they will tie them to the wire support of trestles to make sure that because after all that cutting, it's a little weak. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And so, you know, God will tie it back. I mean, the, the, the vine dresser will tie it back to give that vine an opportunity to grow and to get strong. 1 Corinthians 15, 31 in the Amplified says this, I assure you, believers, by the pride which I have in you, your union with Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily, I face death and die to self. That's why you got to get pruned daily. He said yearly, but God prunes us daily. We have to die daily. There's a part of you that need to be cut off today that was still on you yesterday. There's a part that's going to be cut off today that don't need to be on you tomorrow. So there's a constant pruning because God God wants to do something better. So the message for us is this. Just as the wine dresses prune is yearly, 
The old wood, he is also careful to do it in stages because he doesn't want to break the good branches. So, you know, God is going to help us and the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, becomes that wire support or that trestle that we are tied to to help us to stand, help us to not fall prey, give us the strength to continue to stand. God, he cares about us enough that what he doesn't do, he doesn't prune us and then leave us where we just topple over. Because I don't know if you've seen it. I've seen a couple of times with some bushes been um, trimmed back so much, they ain't look like nothing. They just like, like a stick. You're like, they gonna throw that away. It's like, no, no, no. I remember somebody, I, I don't remember what kind of plant it was, but they, it, it looked like a little Charlie Brown tree stick with nothing green on. I was like, what is that? I know they go going the garden and say, no, 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 that's going to bring forth a lot next year. That scene that next year, that didn't even look like the same thing. It was all full. But they had to, but they had also wrapped it in the wire because it had been trimmed so much it was starting to leak and they wired it up. That's how God does us. Thank you, Jesus. When you get pruned, when I get pruned, sometimes we get weak in the name of Jesus. And it gets hard. You be like, Lord, I don't have no strength. The Holy Ghost rise up in you, straightens your back out, and let you stand like you never could stand before. So God said, I'm going to prune you, but I'm not going to leave you where you cannot stand. I'm going to be with you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Say, because I'm working it out. Because I want you to grow. I want you to grow. And then the branches, the branches, the branches. Branches bear the fruit and the leaves on the grapevine. And as I said, there are times when the branches only need a trim, but then there are the times when it needs to be pruned. Verses 7 through 10 reminds us and where it says, you remain in me, and my word remains in you. He said, that is, you are to be vitally united, and my message lives in your heart. Jesus is telling his disciples, and us today, that there is an expectation from the vine dresser that we are going to bear fruit. We cannot be a true disciple and not produce fruit. Amen. This is only capable when we allow the message of truth to rule in our hearts. We're also told not to doubt his love for us. Why would he tell us this? Well, I think he tells us that when we see in verse, in verse round nine, he says, I do not doubt my love for you. I believe he tells us that because the pruning process is hard. While we can't tell, you know, the, the vine can't tell us if it hurt or not, but if you cut me, I'll tell you it hurt. If you're getting cut and getting cut in a lot of places, stuff that you, you know, stuff that you love is getting cut. Stuff that you need is getting cut. Stuff that you desire is getting cut. You're getting cut to the left, to the right, the back. You're getting cut all the places. You just feel like, oh, I'm bleeding everywhere. I'm just getting cut. What kind of God is this would cut me? And that's why Jesus tells him, he said, don't let the pruning process make you doubt that God loves you. He said, you, because it can feel a little, but we're not going to go with our feelings. We're going to go with what has the truth. That's why he said, let that truth be in you. Let that message be in, let it live in your heart. If the message of truth is living in your heart, that means it's alive. That means it's active. That means you are hearing it. It's you're responding to it. You don't not respond to a dead message. You're responding to a living, live message. Amen. Live. Why? Because you are listening to it daily. You are reading it in your word daily. You're praying about it daily. You are allowing it to minister to you daily. And that's why Jesus tells us, do not doubt my love when you go through hard places. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And then he also told us in verse 11, he says, I have told you this thing. Why? So that my joy and delight may be in you, that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the overflow. One of the first attacks against us from our, the enemy of our soul when we are being pruned is he it comes against truth. He don't want us, he comes against us with that and say, maybe you, if you wouldn't be going through this, if God really loved you. So he tries to tell us that the pruning process is a negative thing. So he comes, that's why he attacks. He also attacks us in our joy. You, you know when you're being attacked, it is hard to be pretty, it is hard to be joyful and at peace. Those two areas that he hits you. You be trying to. I'm going to just be real honest. I be like, Lord Jesus. Uh-huh. My husband, we was going through something. And he was like, well, I'm just trying to see where I can be, you know, grateful. And I just was honest. I said, well, I ain't there yet. I'll figure out where to be grateful. And then I heard somebody else say, I heard a message. And they said, well, you just got to be grateful. Even you got to say, Lord, thank you for the English language. Thank you for Spanish. You know, it was kind of funny. But I heard what he said. Okay, Lord, thank you for my feet. Thank you for my hands. Thank you that my eyes 
word. Thank you for this. You start thanking him for stuff. Just You just start thanking him. Maybe he ain't answered the one you want yet, but you thank him for the stuff that you already got. Because that's the enemy. He tries to come in and he tries to hit you in those areas. And then the greatest place that he tries to hit you is to make you think God don't love you. Amen. He may want you to feel like you're an orphan. He wants to try to make you feel like that some kind of way you did doing it wrong. That's why you under attack because you ain't God ain't pleased with you. No, God is quite pleased with you. That's why he pruning you because he wants to bring greater fruit from you. If he if you was nothing, if you was just like the broken off branch, you'd have just withered and died and you just gone somewhere. But the fact that he pruning you means that there's still life in you. Amen. And so what happens? What happens when we allow the Holy Ghost to, to work with us? What happens when we allow God to prune us? Well, the results are we bloom. Right. We bloom. And the bloom that comes from us is the grapes. And there's some different kind of grapes that I want to tell you about before I sit down. There's some grapes as it relates to other Christians. And this is in the same scripture. And you know, I've read this, and many of you have read this, this, this chapter many times, but it just blessed my soul as I looked at it. Jesus took all of this time in the first 11 verses to really try to explain to us and say to, to, to the people then but to us now yes my children you're going to go through a pruning process God is going to cut off some stuff in your life that's because he wants you to bloom he wants he has an expectation he owns you because he purchased you with my life and because he purchased you he owns you you are now part of his garden he wants to do some great things in you he has an expectation of some fruit he wants some things to come out of you so don't get discouraged when you go through the pruning don't get don't let the devil lie to you when you go through the pruning trust in the things i've already told you trust in the truth trust in what you've seen trust in my word trust 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 Believe, have faith, let your faith grow. This is where you stand in. He said, all oh, for what reason? Because some grapes are coming. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Some grapes are coming. When he get down to the next verses and the rest of the scripture, I'm not going to read it all, but I'm going to just kind of give you an overview. He said, there's some grapes that I want to see. He said, one of the grapes, the bunch of grapes that I want, is I want you to have a love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. You see that in verse 12. God is telling us that, look, I want you to be united one to another. I want you to know what love looks like. You gonna know what love looks like. Why? Because you experienced my love for you. And I want you to be have the same love towards one another. Because you, they gonna need you just like you need them. And this is how you gonna grow together. That's one of the grapes that I want. He said, then I want you to have the kind of grape that'll say, I lay down my own life for somebody else. We see that in verse 13. Why? Because Jesus laid down his life for you and me. He said, are you willing to lay down your life for somebody else? Lay down what's comfortable. Lay down what's convenient. Lay down what's easy. Lay it down for me in the name of Jesus. He said, are you willing to lay down your life? Because it's not always easy. Sometimes when you're going through the pruning, what you want to do is go somewhere, crawl up in a hole, and just wound and deal with your wounds. But you got to say, not my life, not my will, but your will be done. I'm going to get up even in the midst of pruning and I'm going to go on and I'm going to give what I need to give. Why? Because God, I'm laying down my life for your people. Thank you, Jesus. Then he said, I want some grapes. Are you a friend of God? He said that in verse 14 and 15. If you're a friend of God, can you imagine? Do you allow God to prune you so you can be called his friend? Ah, here that my son said. Do you want to be called a friend of God? I don't want to be an enemy of, the, of my father. He said if you want to be a friend of God, you got to let him prove you. Because that will be the grape that comes from your life. And then he says one of the grapes as it relates to others is this. There's a, you are an appointed person. You have a, he has placed you. He has purposely planted you to continually bear fruit. You see that in verse 16. God wants us to know if we allow him, he has an appointment point in time when you're going to bring forth your grapes. He has placed you in the vineyard that he wants you in. Maybe you ain't in this one. Maybe you in this one on the south side, on the north side, east side, wherever it is, he's planted you. You in his vineyard. And he said, that's the place I planted you. And I have purposely planted you where I did. And so that you could continually bear fruit for me. He said, I placed you right here. It might not look like much. People talk about it. But he said, this is my vineyard. And I planted you here and I have an expectation that you gonna bear fruit. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. 
Then he says also this. There's some, some things that come along when you let him prune him. He said, one of the things is you have a right to ask and receive because you ask in Jesus' name. Verses 16 and 17. You and I have a right because we've been pruned. We have a right God has given us to be able to ask for what we need. Not just frivolous because one thing happens. Pruning teaches you how to pray. Pruning teaches you how not to be selfish. Pruning teaches you that you know what? I ain't just asking for frivolous stuff. You're going, Lord, I need you. I need you. I need you. I don't have the answers. I don't even know how to pray for the answers. But I do know this is I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. And so God tells us when we allow him to prune us. Thank you, Jesus. He gives us a right to ask. And then an expectation to receive. Why do we have an expectation to receive? Because we can go back to verse, what it was, uh, for where he says, bear fruit producing evidence of your faith. Because your faith has risen up. You done seen enough since you've been pruned. You've been like, Lord, this stuff hard. But I'm trusting you. I ain't got nobody else to trust in. I'm trusting in you. And I'm believing you're going to bring it out. I'm believing you're going to change my situation. He said, grace, you got grace. We bloom and we bloom it. He says this too. He said, now let me remind you before you get too happy as it relates to this world, there's some things that you're going to have to understand that they hate it. You got to hate the things of the world. Verse 18, you can't be comfortable in the world when you pruned. Something about pruning you makes you uncomfortable in the world. Pruning you makes you not happy with sin. Pruning you makes you let go of those habits and attitudes and behavior that you used to do. You might have been somebody that cussed all the time. You don't even know how to say your name without cussing. But the pruning will prune that back. When you go to open your mouth, you realize that branch ain't there no more. You can't even rely on it no more. Why? Because God didn't cut it back. He said, you gonna, he, pruning you brings you to the place where you hate the things that he hates and love the things that he loves. That's I at a level. So God said these things are going to change. They're going to change. He, he pruning you to let you bring you to be closer like his son. And then you have to understand this because you're being pruned, the world's gonna hate you for the grapes you produce. You see that in verse 20 because you are allowing God to prune you, because you are saying, Lord, have your way in me, because you're saying, Not my will, but your will. You begin to look more like Jesus, you begin to be that branch that's totally stuck to Him. You ain't wavering if the vine is going this way, you're going with the vine. If the vine growing that way, you ain't trying to say, Well, vine, I want to be over here, I want to be over here. No, the vine go this way. You going with the vine because you don't want to be cut off. You want to be permanently stuck. You want to be permanently in place. And you saying, okay, if there's anything, any other branches coming out, cut them off, fix them, take them back so that I can continue to grow. And you will say then, but guess what? But then after a while, you get to see your little great bud. And other folks going to look at you. Well, who she is and why she growing and why she got that gift and how come the Lord letting her do this and how come... Shut your mouth and mind your business. I've been pruned. I've been pruned to bloom. I've been pruned so I can bloom. Don't hate on me because I'm bringing forth grapes. Guess what? You can bring forth grapes and just stop being a hater and just start doing what the Lord would have you to do. But God says expect it that the world will hate you because of what you produce. And then you don't have to worry about it. Let me tell you why you don't think. Because they're going to hate you. They hated Jesus. Uh, duh, you're in good company. That means they hating you. That means you're looking more like the one that you belong to. If they don't hate you, if all the world love you, and everybody got the praises for you all the time, you need to look in the mirror and make sure you're still attached to the right vine. But when they starting to hate you, when they coming against you, you better be all right because that's what they did to Jesus. They crucified him. Hello? So why wouldn't you expect to be crucified for the ones that crucified him? And why did they crucify Jesus? They didn't like the fact that he was doing things. They didn't like the fact that he was calling attention to what they wasn't doing. So guess what? When you start to hate the things of the world, your behavior, not even you opening your mouth, but your behavior will begin to draw attention to the fact when folks ain't doing what God has called them to do. So you'll be hated for it. 
But God says this. He said, now when you've been pruned to, as it relates to the world, he said, you don't have to worry about the haters. You don't have to worry about it. Why? He said, because you have a helper that will help you testify of Jesus. You see that in verse 26. He says that he will be with you to help you so that you can be able to testify. Let me read that. It says, but when the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby comes, whom I have sent to you from the Father. That is the spirit of truth. He comes from the Father. He will testify and bear witness about me, but you will also, you will testify also and be my witness because you have been with me from the beginning. See, Jesus tells us, don't worry about this pruning process because you're not being pruned by yourself. I've sent you a helper. He's a comforter. He'll comfort you when you don't feel good. He'll comfort you when you're feeling down and out and cast to the side. He's an advocate when you don't even know how to pray. He'll intercede for you to the Father on your behalf. He'll intercede for you when you don't even know how to intercede. He'll stand in places where you can't stand on your own. Thank you, Jesus. This is making me feel good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He's a counselor. When you don't know what to do and how to do, he can be a counselor. I heard folks say, you know, I'll be a counselor in the courtroom. Lord, you can be a counselor in every room. In the courtroom, in the schoolroom, in the houseroom, wherever I need a counselor. Somebody to stand in against the laws that are coming against me. Against the decrees that are coming against me. I can trust you. I can trust you. Thank you, Jesus. And then you are a strengthener. Holy Ghost rise up in us and give us the strength we need to go through the pruning process so when it gets too hard and the pruning make us feel like we weak and go fall you holy ghost wrap us up like you do with a Y on the dress and then we don't have to fall down thank you Jesus and then you to stand by thank you Jesus and even when I'm going through you standing by ready for me to say hold me holy ghost sir. Intercede for me, Holy Ghost. Give me wisdom. Give me direction. Help me to know where I need to go because I need you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He says, I am the true vine. My Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that's continued to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes. So that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. God, we thank you today. You're bringing us to the place where our fruit this season is better than the fruit from last season. Amen. You're bringing forth that hybrid fruit. Thank you, Jesus. That fruit that's put together in ways we don't even understand. You're bringing out of our lives stuff that we didn't think better and stronger I, I kind of hear the six million dollar man music in my ear. You doing some stuff in us, Lord, because we might have felt like we couldn't make it, but you because you pruned us so hard. But you did it. You did it so that we can grow stronger. We can bring more. And I thank you for the season that's coming. Mm. Now maybe this ain't you. Maybe it's just me. I don't know everybody else. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But if you found yourself, or if you've been going through some pruning, and it's just been hard. And you've been like, Lord, I need some help. I want to pray with you today. Because I know I need. I need all the strength I can get. And sometimes we don't get the help we need because we be too busy acting like, oh, no, I'm just fine and perfect and everything is me. I'm just highly favored and all that lovely stuff. It sounds like great cliche cliches, but help me, Jesus, is my answer. I'm like, Lord, we need your help. We need you. So why don't you stand with me? We want to be able to see the bloom. But we also know that God is going to prune us. And like I said, who goes, yeah, Lord, I'm going to be pruned. No one that I know of. But Jesus did. How did I know that? Because he said, not my will, Father, but yours. Amen. So that's how we give God the permission to prune us. We say, Lord, I don't want this. Can you remove this pruning? But you know what's best. And because you know what's best, that I say not my will, but your will. And so I want to pray with you today. Thank you, Jesus.
you desire prayer. And it ain't, your pruning ain't got to be super hard. Sometimes pruning ain't always hard. I don't know when it's not, but you know, for me it generally is. But you know, y'all could be made of stronger stuff than I am. I don't know. <laughs> so, thank you, Jesus. Justin, do me a favor. Anoint everybody. Because we want God to meet us in here under this open heaven. We want his strength, his comfort. We want all that he has for us. And we're asking him to, even this week, even as he did it last week, he, he began to bless us and show us things. We thank you. We want him to open up this week and begin to show us even newer blessings. And, and anoint Jocelyn. And we want, want, to, want to see some things and move. She didn't move, but go anoint her as well. Because we want to see God move in our lives. Because we already know he's teaching us and showing us in his word that we don't bloom if you don't prune. We won't bring forth the flowers and the fruit unless he cut back the dead things. So we asking him to do it in his hand and help us to be even more sure in our faith and our trust that he's not doing it to destroy us. We don't want to believe the lies of the devil to tell us God don't love us. But in fact, if scripture can tell us those he loves, he does what? He, he corrects. And so we're going to trust him for that. Let's pray. God, we thank you this day, Father, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you are the one that is concerned about who we are, that you take care of every need that we have. We thank you, Lord, that you are the vine dresser. And because we are yours, you're going to pull back those things that are not fruitful, those things that will hinder us from being who you have called us to be. And sometimes the pruning process hurts. But God, today we come and say we trust you. We give ourselves to you. The reason why we can go through the fact of the pruning is because we are attached to the true vine. That's Jesus Christ. He is the one that took it all so that we have a right to be attached. And because we are attached, he loves us so much. You love us so much that you said you sent us a comforter. You sent us a standby. You sent us someone that will walk with us so that even when it gets too heavy in our trials, that he wraps us up and he keeps us close to you so that we don't falter, we don't fall, but that we're able to keep standing. Father, I speak over your people that have come up today. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would just do and bring a fresh wind over our lives. The Holy Ghost, I pray you would rise up in us like never before. I'm praying that you would allow your glory to be revealed in us. Just a fresh wind come upon us in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now and ask that you would help us to stand strong, to be strong. If there's discouragement, we ask for you to lift that heaviness from our hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Any, any discouragement, Father, we ask that you replace it with faith. Replace it, Lord, with joy. Replace it with your peace, that peace that passes all understanding. We ask in the comforter to comfort the hearts today of your people. Many have been discouraged because we're waiting, we're trusting we believe the words have been spoken over us that there's a blessing coming but it just has not pushed through yet but Father just as we was prophesied earlier Lord God even if we are under concrete you have a way of pressing us forward that we can still burst through every single circumstance every situation. Nothing can hold us back because we are trusted in you and because we've attached ourselves to the right vine we're climbing up Lord God even as was prophesied we're going in the places that we couldn't go by ourselves but because we're attached to the right vine going in the right direction we're going also God I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are moving in the lives of your people I'm asking you to open doors right now in the name of Jesus open up financial doors that need to be open close doors that need to be closed touch bodies and heal minds and hearts and spirits and emotions we ask the 
deliverer to come in right now in the name of Jesus. Restore things that need to be restored and tear down things that need to be tear down. We ask the break of the break of the break. We ask the break of the step forward in our life in the name of Jesus and to have your way. Have your way, Lord God. Even those that are not here today, Father, we praying for them in their absence. We're asking you to touch them where they are. Let them feel the presence of God. Let them feel the presence of these prayers going forth on their behalf. God, we thank you for what you're doing. We trust in you. We're having faith in you. We are looking for the reveal of the things that you've promised to us. So God, we say give us the strategies we need in this season. Because sometimes when you're going through the pruning, it's hard to see the evidence. It's hard to see the what's next. But God, I ask that you make it clear and plain for us so that we can run with the vision that you've given us for our lives. Help us as we prepare for this coming week. Give us the strategy day by day. Show us what we need to do tomorrow for tomorrow. Help us to know what we need to do today for today. Father, day by day we ask you to release the strategies over us. Day by day we ask you to release the resources over us. I'm asking for favor over situation. There are things that are going on in each of your people's lives that need an answer and we ask it right now in Jesus name you release a favorable answer on their behalf. Release a favorable encounter. Receive a favorable answer in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask you to burn it up in the name of Jesus. Burn off everything that the enemy has tried to bring against your people. Burn it off in the fire of God. Burn it off. Burn it off. Burn it off. Father, we say thank you. We apply the blood to our lives. The blood of Christ to our thinking. So we think right. So that our thoughts won't be contaminated by the bugs and the past that the enemy tries to plant on us. And then wherever he tries to plant, we ask you to cut it off in the name of Jesus. Prune it back. Move it out. Help us, Lord God, so we can stay strong and steadfast moving in the direction you have called us to move. You have declared over your people that we will hold and handle millions. We will handle resources. We will handle lives. We will be able to do these things. Why? Because you have pruned us and prepared us to be able to handle these things. Lives will be changed because of the pruning you're doing in our lives. People will be able to find resources because we will become the resource. Lord God, we thank you for those that are here. We thank you even for what you're going to do as you begin to bring more people into this church. You have not finished with Abundant Life Worship Center. You have called us. We are one of your vineyards and you're working. You know us. You know every grape in here. You know every um every branch in here. And because you know every branch, you know what you want to do in the lives of your people. Now I speak peace over your people. I speak prosperity over your people. I speak life over your people. I speak resources over your people. Purpose in the name of Jesus. You are planted on purpose, with a purpose, and the vineyard dresser expects fruit. Father, bring forth the fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you Jesus. 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 I want to say this last word and I'm going to give it to Pastor Jane. Just remember this. God wants you to bloom. That his pruning of you is not a destruction or to destroy you. His pruning of you is because he loves you enough to make sure that you are going to grow. God bless you.